Hi, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs. Let's take a look at props inside of ProPresenter. Props are a layer in ProPresenter, uh, specifically this layer right here. And the purpose of props is that they live on top of the other layer, such as the video layer or the media layer or the text layer or any of the other layers in ProPresenter. Props live on top. So to access props, if I go to the bottom right side of ProPresenter, I can click on this gathering starts in prop or this welcome prop or this name tag prop or this other name tag prop. The goal of props is to create things that go on top of stuff. So here I've got this gathering starts in prop and I'm going to take a look at how I made this, but I just want to show you that it exists. And if I go over to the timers tab and I start a timer, it's going to show right there. I have this one set up so that either a timer or a, let's see, a lapse time, no, either a countdown to time or a countdown time will trigger it, but they're only allowed to be on the screen one at a time. So I have four types of props that I would like to make in this video. Our first prop is a prop to display a service countdown timer. So here you've, you can see my gathering starts in timer and I'm gonna go ahead and take that off the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new one. I'm gonna call it timer. And now I'll right click, go to edit, and then you could also go to more props editor to open up the props editor. So we're gonna need a couple of things. We're gonna need a text box to tell the audience, hey, here's what's happening on this slide. I'm gonna call this one gathering begins in, so that way they have an idea of what's going on. I'm also gonna, let's see here, capitalize it maybe, and then scale text up or down so that the text is as big as possible in the slide. And now I'll just do like something like that. Um, I think that might actually, I might not want to capitalize that. Make it a little smaller. Okay, that'll work. Ooh, whoops. Okay, that'll work. So now I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this uh, same text box. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the text. Just gonna put the word timer in there for a nameplate. So I'm gonna go to linked text in the right side and I'm gonna go down to timers and I wanna count down to time. So. I have this set up a little bit different on my church computer because our first service, it counts down to 9 a.m. It's a hard locked 9 a.m. Our second service, I have two slides set up. So if it's currently before 1020, our second service starts at 1030. So if it's before 1020, then we start our countdown to time timer. If it's currently after 1020, then we start basically a 10 minute countdown timer. So gathering begins in, that's gonna be a countdown to time and that'll be set elsewhere, but we just need to put it in place here. So on both of these, we could probably, we're probably gonna wanna add a background. So if we go over to shape, we could go ahead and click fill, and now we can go to add a black fill. So the thing about the, if I turn the opacity down, it's also gonna turn the, oh, that's weird. In the past, that's always turned down the text, but maybe they changed that, I'm not sure about that. So I'll go ahead and add a fill on both of these and then turn it down to 50%. That's really fascinating if that was changed. I never noticed that. Okay, so now I'll just drag it to the middle. So now we have a gathering begins in timer. So if I go ahead and start the countdown timer, 10 minutes, and I go back to my props tab and I click on our new timer, gathering begins in 166. Uh, let's double check that we actually set it to the countdown timer time and not the countdown to time. Let's go to timers, countdown. I bet if we go back to show, so let's clear all, let's put the announcements back up. Let's put the timer up on the screen. You can see it's at 10 minutes. That's really interesting. So it actually did, uh, when I turned the transparency down, it turned the text layer down and the black bar, bar behind it. We'll fix that in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, to turn on the countdown. So there we go. So I'm gonna go back to my props layer, gonna go to edit, now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this transparency back up to 100% and I'm gonna turn off the fill. And I'll do the same thing for this, turn off the fill, transparency back to 100. I'm gonna to have to create a new shape because we need a shape that we can put below this that we can turn the opacity down and it still work so that we can see the black bar behind this. So, Okay, so this one I can turn down because it's not linked to the text so it doesn't matter. So okay, there's that and there's that. Beautiful, and now when I click on show, it should bring up the text nice and bright, and it will show us the timer. So I have two timers set up, like I said. So one of them is locked to 10.30, which is our second service, whereas the second one is locked to just a 10 minute timer. I don't wanna have to have two of these. 
I could, but I don't wanna have to have two of these when I could just have one. So let's go ahead and go to the timers and let's go ahead and start this countdown. It's not 10.30 a.m., so uh, this will both work. So let's go back to the props layer. Let's go to edit. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click on the countdown and I'm gonna click on the visibility. So we have some conditions that we can set up. So to, if they're not met or if they are met, this text box will go away or not be here or whatever. So I'm gonna choose, let's see here. So choose type. I'm gonna go to timer. Let's start with countdown because that's what we're currently on. So type countdown. So uh, has time remaining. So if the countdown is running, then it's gonna have time remaining. So if it has time remaining, and let's add a plus timer. So if it has time remaining and is running, then we want it to be visible. But if it's not, then we don't. So let's copy this and then let's put it in, that, in the exact same spot. Let's go to text. Let's go to countdown and change this to countdown to time. And now actually we might be able to just use this exact same stuff. Uh, countdown to time, we gotta change that. Countdown to time. And now the question is, if it has time remaining and is running, then it should show up and it'll only show up then. So right now I've got both of them running. So this one's running, if I stop it and I run this one, oh, I messed something up. Okay, so the countdown one seems to be the one that's not working properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clear that. Let's go back to this and we will check on the countdown layer. So countdown, oh, has expired. I think I noticed that when I copied and pasted for the second one and I had to change that. I should have realized that there was a problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and cut this off and let's bring this uh, prop back up. And now I'll go to timer and turn on my countdown. And now I'll go turn on my, oh, so you can see both of them. So the thing is, I don't want both of them to show up and I can't guarantee that they're both not gonna be on at the same time. So we need to fix that. So I'm looking at my old one because sometimes you gotta reference your old work to figure out what I did to make this work. And I think what I did was something sneaky. So my rectangle that I just made to make it fully wide, let's go ahead and make that just cover the gathering begins in that way we can turn that opacity down. And now on our countdown, let's go ahead and fill that and put a black background behind it. And on our countdown to time, let's fill that. So now it's gonna bring the black background in if it's on. So if I go ahead and click on the timer, it's now on the new timer. Now if I go to the timers tab, if I stop this one and I start this one, if I stack them, this top one will always go on top of it and it'll cover up the back one. So they're both technically running right now, but the only the top one is visible because the top one was the top layer in here. So I'll click edit. So countdown is the top layer, countdown two time is the second layer. So that's how you set up the props inside of ProPresenter to act as a countdown for your countdown for your service. Let's go to the countdown page and you can see here I've got that, is it before 10.20 a.m. or is it after 10.20 a.m. prop set up. If I right click on this, you can see I've got the gathering starts in, uh, ready to go right there. And now the other two things I've got going on are I've got the countdown to time because that's telling it, hey, start at 10.30. And the second one I've got going is the countdown, which tells it to stop the countdown. So on this one, we're stopping the countdown and we're starting the countdown to time. Over here on this one, we are starting the countdown to time and we're stopping the countdown timer. So this one should say 10 minute countdown, whereas the other one gives us a stop action. And that's one of the things I've done to make sure that the timer that is not supposed to be running is not running when the slide is clicked. So there's the announcements back on the screen. And now if it's before 1020, there's our gathering starts in countdown to 1030. And here is our after 1020. So it just gives us a 10 minute countdown. So with our countdown on the screen, if I go to the, the first song of the service and I click on the first slide, you see it's gonna come up and the prop is still on the screen. So to fix this, I can add a clear action. So add action on, so right click on my a macro that's set up for worship. I go to add action clear props. So now if I click on the first slide, it'll always clear the prop and then it'll go into the song. 
Well, as it turns out, I'm not gonna spend as much time on the other three props as I had hoped, but let's go back to the props tab in ProPresenter. I'm gonna right click on that timer prop that we made and I'm just gonna delete all of the elements on here. And now I'm gonna go to the text box and create a new text element and let's find some random text to paste into here. There we go, I think that might be the title of this video. Okay, so that made it nice and big, but actually I could just uh, use the scale feature, text up or down. Maybe that's a little bit too up or down. Eh, we'll figure it out in a minute when we do what we're gonna do with it. So I wanna turn this into a scrolling bar of text. So let's click on the scrolling feature, and I think we're gonna have to make it on one line for this. So let's just make it smaller, smaller, smaller. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just activate the prop and see what happens. Hey, how cool is that? So there is our box of text scrolling. Let's go back to edit. So I wanna get rid of this text background. Click on this gear here and go and just eliminate that. And now let's go ahead and change the text color to white and let's go to shape and we'll activate fill because I think this is gonna be a better option for giving us a background to make it visible on our stuff. So now let's turn it off and we'll turn it back on and see what we got. So let's go turn the announcement layer on and there you go, so now we have a scrolling text and there's a bunch of settings you can pick on this. If I go to edit, click on the text layer and go back to text, uh, scrolling, there's a bunch of settings you can change like the direction, the uh, starting position, the speed, the feathering, which is cool because then you can make it uh, kind of show in the center but not so much on the sides. So there's a lot of things we can do with this to make it really cool and make it really useful. The next type of effect that I'm hoping to use while utilizing a prop is to show a name tag on the screen. So let's go to our sermon notes layer. So I've got my name tag here and in my in my ProPresenter 7 template, all of this is set up and ready to go for you. So if you purchase that and download it, you can grab all of this, it's ready to go. Let's right click on this name tag here and this is where I intend for you to put your pastor's name. You could put your own logo here, a description, a title of uh, who the pastor is and what his position is. So let's go ahead and put this on our sermon notes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. So when this slide is activated, it's gonna bring this pastor's name into the slide. Now you could clear it by clicking props right here to clear it, or you could just click on it again down in the props layer, but I wanna automatically get rid of it. So ProPresenter version 17 released this new feature called auto clear on props. So I'll just set it at five seconds. So now when I click on the first slide of the sermon, I it pulls up the pastor's name tag, but now it goes away after five seconds. So once you click on it, you can see here in this transition bar, how much time is left. You could pause it if you wanna keep it on the screen and then you can restart it so that it'll go away at the appropriate amount of time. So that's a super cool way to have a prop on the screen, but then get rid of it at an undisclosed amount of time. And you can also set it as a custom time so you can pick your own time, which is really cool. And the last way I wanna show the props off is let's right click on our timer, go to edit. So let's say you have a live stream. You can bring in your video input for your graphics on the prop layer. You've got your video input coming in from your ATEM switcher. Ideally, you're using something like this Ultra Studio Recorder 3G, because this is such a great device for inputting video into your computer. So let's go ahead and go to shape. It's already set to video input because that's what I selected and now you can select uh, here in my template. I've got the recorder 3G for the video input and then we've got our graphics input. Oftentimes people are going to use uh, a NDI feed from their front of house computer to bring graphics into ProPresenter. So now with our video layer activated, if I go to video input, we can activate my webcam. I'll just clear all and then activate my webcam layer. Hi. And now when I bring on the graphics, it's gonna bring in these graphics from ProPresenter, from the front of house computer, ideally, so that we can bring in our lower third graphics or lower third uh, sermon notes or full screen graphics. Here's a random output from OBS. So that's how you do this. And if you want to have more questions about that, go check out the video that I talk all about that. That's pretty much all I want to say about props. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs. If you have any questions or comments about this video, leave them in the comments below the video. And here is my ProPresenter 7 template. If that's something you're interested in purchasing from my website at crazyamazingdesigns.com. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.